Hey everybody, what's going on? It is week 10 of the semester already. Amazing to think how fast time has gone by for us. It is, uh, is it, we're at the end. Can you believe it? Hats are due, Every projects are coming due. It's kind of amazing. We actually have our last and final reading this week. So I want to spend a little time talking with you today about two things really. Uh, the idea of, of ethics, as Block kind of introduces that in the chapter that's posted up on Blackboard. And then I also want to wrap up our session today. I want to pose a couple of questions for you, some things for you to think about. But I want to draw your attention to something that I'm, I'm doing here. So you might notice that on this side of the face is kind of light and on this side of the face is kind of dark. And Block talks a little bit about that. So I want to use this analogy of, of both light and dark as we, as we move forward today. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of the slides. So as we begin to switch gears and we move away from thinking about what is it meant to do consulting and to be a consultant and, and how you actually implement the idea of change within an organization, we have, we have talked about so many theories and practices. We've heard from outside speakers. You've heard from, uh, from all of us about our own experiences in the world of, of consulting. But tonight, let's switch our gears away from how and what, right, into the why, and really kind of understand the principles that undergird the foundation, specifically the idea of ethics and experience. I want to draw our attention to some things that Block talks about. So Block talks a lot about the idea of consulting and the work of consulting as a profession focused on helping and caring. Now, let that sink in for a minute. Like, Consulting is primarily there for helping and for caring rather than as an occupation focused on selling and making money. Now, many of you work in large-scale organizations. How many of you have run into consultants where you feel like all they're trying to do is sell you or all they're trying to do is, is make money rather, rather than helping and caring? So what might be in your own life? Let's reflect for a moment. What might be in your own life some examples of this, some very specific and salient examples of when you've encountered perhaps maybe the opposites of that, where you have run into somebody who you felt like they were listening, they were genuinely interested, they were uh, involved in a partner with you in collaborating, and they cared about it versus the other piece of that, which is where they're selling something constantly. I've certainly run in to my fair share of these kinds of consultants uh, in my own professional experience, both at the, um, at the cruise line and also at the university. Now, there are some differences here that we may want to think about in terms of how this works for external consultings versus internal consulting. Certainly, there are interesting and unique dynamics with that. But make no mistake about it, and don't miss this, that the idea of consulting, as it's defined by Shine and as it's defined by Block, is primarily centered on the idea of helping and caring, not on selling something, not on the next project, but rather being focused on what's happening within the present. Remember that our guest speaker talked about being in the moment, being present with your client and what that was like. If we move on to some other ideas here, Block also talks about um, different types of approaches, but he specifically talks about traps. He talks about the traps of the consultant. I would encourage you to read through that Block text and, uh, and dissect that final chapter that's posted up on Blackboard to really understand what he's talking about when we say the word trap, right? And then thinking about how you might even overcome some of these things. Right, if you believe they exist, and I happen to be of the mindset that these kinds of traps do exist for consultants. Not only have I fallen into these traps myself, but I've experienced them as an outsider. So think about the approach that you've taken in your homework. So this is an opportunity, right, for us to really begin to pull everything together, thinking about what it means for your specific project, for your specific experience, and then retrospectively reflect back and think about how your experience has paralleled the things that Sean and Block have talked about. How is it that you perhaps stepped in the river here? Is it the same? Is your client the same? Is your stakeholder the same? Tell me a little bit about this, right? Explain it. Share with me. Share back with us. Think about. Reflect on what it's been like for you to step in this particular river. Where might you have found yourself? 
as we begin to kind of wrap up our session, uh, gosh, for the entire semester, there's a couple of questions that I might I might leave you here with. What successes or failures have you had in teaching versus learning, right? And encouraging learning instead of teaching. So thinking about the mantra that Shine says that how we teach other people, right? How we help other people, how how we engage in the idea of learning, right? So what successes and failures have you had? What's it been like encouraging learning instead of teaching others, right? What do you think of the recommendations about that Block might make, in addition to some of the traps, but when he's when he says to stop asking how and instead ask why. Not how does this happen, but why does this happen, right? Not what is happening, but why is it happening? How do you recognize the strengths and weaknesses that come uh, in freedom with constraints, right? What does that mean? How how can something be be free and constrained at the same time? And, you might reflect for a moment on your own relationship with your stakeholder and in, in your own consulting experience. And then what are some lasting lessons that you might even reflect on? At the end of the day, what do these texts mean for you? How have they impacted your practice? What, what will you do differently as a result of being in this particular class? So as we begin to wrap up our session here today, think about what it means to bring someone into the light and what it might mean for us to be in the dark. For us to work through constraints and the dark side of consulting uh, and the need that we might feel to jump in and, and use a, a, hand, a pair of hands model or the expert model where we're telling someone versus process consulting where we're actually helping them understand and to learn how to help themselves. What does this mean for you in your own practice? You know, at the end of the day, as a faculty member here at the University of Louisville, I, I ask myself, how are students different as a result of taking this class? How, are they, how have they been changed um, by spending time with me once a week? How has their experience been affected by talking with their peers? What's been going on in their own life, right? How will they be different students as a result of taking this particular class? And I wonder that today. So having read Shine and Red Block and been involved hands-on with projects that are going on in real life, out in real time, I wonder how you'll be different the next time someone comes up to you and says, hey, can you give me a hand with this? I'm having a little bit of a problem. I'd like to ask you some questions. I'm wondering how you're going to respond. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask myself, are you going to jump in with your hands and get dirty and make it happen? Are you going to be the expert that tells the person how to do it but leaves them needing more and wanting more for the next time when they run into the same situation? Or are you going to use the process consultation model? And under what ethics will you begin – to apply these principles. How has Shine affected you? How has Block affected you? How has this class affected your own life? Most importantly, I wonder how these skills have affected your own personal relationships at home. How has listening, deeply listening, how has understanding models of, of communication and conflict, how does understanding the traps and Shine's principles, how have they affected your own relationships? As you read through the text and you keep these books on your shelf, I wonder, how have you been affected by that? Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure.